Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Today we're jumping straight into an interactive card for a Lawn Fanatics challenge. I'll get into more of that later, but to start out, I am cutting out my peekaboo pop-up interactive dies from Lawn Fawn. We're going to have two of those big guys, one of that middle layer piece, and then I'm cutting all three tabs just because I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. I only ended up using one of them. You only need one at a time, but when in doubt, if you have the scrap paper, go ahead and cut it. So before we get started in all the good details, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, so I can see you every Friday for some more crafty inspiration. So I'm going to start creating my card base by folding these bigger pieces on the score lines that the die creates and reinforcing them with my bone folder. You're going to fold one into being like a mountain and the other one as a valley. If you haven't seen Lawn Fawn's video on how to make, how to use this die, like the easiest way to make these cards, I'll link it down below because they do a little bit of a better explanation than I probably can. Um, but it is super easy. I usually watch those videos as a refresh before I start. So there's no shame in that. Um, I marked my paper, that's the part that's going to be the front at two and three quarters, lined up this stitched hillside die that comes with this die set and then just trimmed off the extra because I am using 110 pound cardstock to make this and uh, the die didn't cut through all three layers go figure so a little scissor snip and I'm just using a pencil to mark out that insert layer so that when I get to my ink blending I know how far I need to worry about taking my ink down so we're going to start with that front panel area first. I'm going in with Twisted Citron Distress Ink to start. I masked the edge of my front panel where the folds are, that valley fold, with some washi tape so that I have a nice clean line on the edge there. Then I'm going in with one of Lawn Fawn's Grassy Hillside stencils and some Mowed Lawn Distress Ink. Then I'm going to also bring in some Rustic Wilderness just right behind those grassy peaks so that we get that really nice shadow all the way down. And then I'm switching which hillside I'm using and repeating the process further down on the card, going in with the mowed lawn again, and then adding in that really extra deep shadow right at the bottom with the Rustic Wilderness. And then I'm going to use those same two inks on the most bottom section. Um, just right at the bottom without worrying about a stencil. And I'm using the Wendy Vecchi Small Stay Station, that one, uh, with the magnets to hold all of this in place. I just have a piece of printer paper on top so that I don't have to clean it when I'm done. So now I'm going in with that insert panel and I'm going to create a sunny sky. So I'm using squeeze lemonade first and just doing a really general all the way around blend, not worrying about it being patchy at all. I could care less at this point because I'm bringing in this Ray stencil also from Lawn Fawn and I'm going to not do circles with this one. I'm going in with the mustard seed distress ink and I'm pulling and um, I'm pulling my ink in the same direction that the stencil lines are going and that way I'm not buckling my stencil or getting anything under the lines. So you can see that beautiful sunshine um, effect that that creates and I'm going to add one half of my sentiment to the sunshiny sky and the other part of my sentiment to the bottom grassy area. So I want to pre-apologize. I know this one is sped up a good bit. It's just because a lot of detail went into this card and even though the process is simple, it's not a fast one to make. Um, and I, I haven't had any like 20 or 30 minute videos on my channel so far. So I wanted to keep it moving um, so that nobody would get, you know, super bored, but also there's just a lot to go over. So I used the thanks, thanks, thanks stamp set from Lawn Fawn, and I did one of the thanks right on that sunny sky background. Now I'm adding in the for being awesome um, from that same stamp set, and I borrowed the little like add-on berry from the very special stamp set so that it's going to end up saying thanks for being very awesome. And I just thought that was so cute because you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to be pulling in the strawberry dies from the strawberry patch die set and they are so stinking cute. 
So I have my front panel done, my insert panel done. I'm leaving the back of my card white. I really like the idea of this crisp white border on this card. So I'm going to attach my insert panel into the card with just some um, dot adhesive. And I'm using really strong scrappy tape to adhere my front panel to my back panel because we want to make sure that they stick really well. So I'm adding two pieces of that tape to this one side and then we're going to wait until all of our other bits are done to finish closing this up. I've made that mistake before where I adhered the whole thing shut and then you can't end up putting in your mechanism later. So make sure you leave it open like a book for now until you're ready. And now we're jumping in to these strawberry patch dies. I'm going to end up making five strawberries total. I'm going to do three of the large and two of the small. Um, and then after I'm done die cutting each of the layers, I'm going to go back in with the same tape that I'm holding my die, my metal dies in place with and flip it and add it to the back of the paper so that I can use that to help stick my die cuts back in so that when I'm doing my ink blending in a minute, it's going to be so much easier. And I don't know about you, but my plates are pretty old and it's probably time to get a new one. Um, but because they're so scored up, sometimes those little bits like the seeds like to stick on there. So instead of wrecking my nails or driving myself nuts, I just take my bone folder and kind of scrape them off. And that seems to work pretty well. So I cut the solid layer, the layer that has the seeds, uh, two of the leafy branches, and then all of the strawberry tops that I was going to need to make my five strawberries. And like I said, I'm just going to add that tape right to the back of each section so that I can make it almost like a little puzzle and pop those pieces right back in. For our strawberries on the solid layer, I'm going to start out with the tattered rose and I'm going to go in on the solid ones and just do a really soft all over blend on those. Again, they're just going to peek out through the little seed holes, so you don't really have to overthink those. For the secondary layer, I did a small and a large at the same time and I'm going to create an ombre effect lightest to darkest starting with the tattered rose at the top then moving to festive berries on the bottom like three quarters and then just going in with the tiniest bit of aged mahogany right on the edges at the bottom just to really help give it some extra definition and contrast. Um, I just think that really helps them to kind of pop but obviously you can play with whatever colors you have. I just I found that festive berries even though I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like a cranberry color works so well for strawberries it, it just really appeals to me so and I love kind of pushing the idea of how strawberries have that lightish yellowy pinky top to them I really like that effect so I always like to bring in either um, antique linen or tattered rose on that top section to peek out from under the strawberry lids which is what I'm going to be shading in now. I swapped out the inks in my little Simon Says Stamp Station. I'm using the same greens that I used on the grass. So we're going in with Twisted Citron, um, a little bit of mowed lawn, and a tiniest touch of Rusted Wilderness. I really didn't use a lot of that just because these are so small. I didn't think you were really going to notice the difference between all of those inks. So I just do two at a time, popping them in and out. I just think that this is so nice and easy. I'm using one of the smaller brushes from Simon Says Stamp, the small bl small blending brushes, um, just for more control. And because I already had it dirty with the green ink, I figured I would just go in and use the same one for the leaves um, versus I use the Ranger mini blending foam tool to do my strawberries because they have just so much more space to them. So the same thing with the leaves, same exact colors. I just wanted everything to be nice and cohesive because I knew there was going to be so much going on in this card. And then it was time to assemble our strawberries. So I'm going in with this little precision tip bottle that I put my glue into. I found it at the craft store. There was like three for a couple dollars. Um, and I just poured some glue from my regular bottle right into it. I am layering up the seed area onto the solid, adding a little top, 
and then just working my way through. I'm pretty sure I showed a couple and then I chopped the rest out because you can only watch me layer these up so many times. So I did want to incorporate, of course, the Lawn Fawn mice. They're my favorite thing from Lawn Fawn by far. And so I grabbed um, a couple mice from the You Autumn Know. The one sitting and the one jumping are from the fall set. And then the one with the overalls and the little sign that I stamped Berry Patch onto are both from the Berry Special stamp set. And I just love how many different sets Lawn Fawn has come out with with these mice. They have a new release coming out at the end, and I think in like a week or two. Um, and I cannot wait. I, I'm i just fingers crossed that there's at least one more new mouse stamp set because I love them so much. But I love that you can mix and match them between sets. And I'm going in with the E43, 42, and 41 just to shade them in. Um, they're so cute and little. I have no problems coloring them kind of all at once instead of having to do one at a time the whole way through. I gave them some dark E49 noses and then went in with a little pink on their ears. And then the overalls, of course, had to be jean overalls just to push this kind of like sunny farm feeling that I'm creating on my card. I went in with the E30 markers to do a really soft and gentle wood grain on my sign, not worrying about too much, you know, heavy detail on this. I just wanted it to have enough to make it look like it wasn't an afterthought because the rest of my card is pretty detailed. So I cut out all of my little images with the coordinating dies, and then we get to the real fun part when we are assembling our interactive element. So I took the tab that was going to get me the closest pop-up on that mouse. I inked up the front and back of my little tab yellow so it would blend in nicely with my sky. You just line it up on that inner section of the book and you can see right away as soon as you pull it open that little air that tab pops right up and I laid him out so that he will pop up right under the thanks and then later on we'll add a strawberry under him in front of him so it looks like he's kind of jumping up onto that strawberry like he's just on top of the world. So I trimmed the excess off of the tab and I put him into place with that same very strong scrappy tape. I found that using liquid glue was just too difficult in the past because they, it moves so much. The whole thing is that it's meant to move around and when it's moving it's it just won't stay straight where you want it so tape was the easiest thing to do and then I started bringing in my strawberries and leaves and honestly this was the most fun of this whole thing because I really got to play around in creating this little world for these mice so while you watch me have too much fun um, playing with where everything should go and I should say I check to make sure my mouse can still move between each step because in the past I've put things in its path and it will stop it from popping up. So I, you see in between every single step, I'm checking to make sure my mouse is good before I close up my card. So I added some tape to the front. I added more tape to that other back section so that no spot would be missed. And then you just fold it over, line it up and push it down into place. So if what I was going to say is if you have not seen the Lawn Fanatics challenges before, they're super fun. It's something that Lawn Fawn hosts over on. They have their own Fanatics blog and there's always some kind of challenge going on. This one is for interactive cards and I just love having these kinds of challenges available for times when I'm feeling a little low on my own personal inspiration. I find that these really help to kind of get my creative brain going. And so with a new release right around the corner, I wanted to play with some of my Lawn Fawn goodies again. And this challenge seems like the perfect time. So I'll leave a link down below in the description box to that Lawn Fanatic blog post. So if you want to see how you can enter in, it's a random winner. It's super fun. Um... And I love seeing everything that everybody makes and seeing like how people combine and use even the interactive die sets in new ways. That's the best part, right? It's just to see how everybody is inspired differently from the same prompt. So back to the card, I put everything into place. I'm tucking my sign in. I'm going to go in with a white gel pen to add some highlights to the strawberries and to the eyes of my, my mice. And then that is going to be my whole card finished. 
This was just so much fun. I love how cheerful and cute that little mouse is when he pops up to say thank you. I want to thank you for coming to hang out with me today. I hope you're feeling inspired. I can't wait till I see you again next week. I hope that you have an amazing week and as always, happy crafting.